Hello, oh, it works. Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for attending our Artists Speak to Artists session. My name is Emily Gono, and I'm a manager, and I'm very honored to moderate this cool panel, uh, like trans-Pacific panel, uh, with Kelly Mays, who's a US female rapper uh, who has been pretty um, groundbreaking in the way she's been using free and, and free downloads and Jamando and Frostwire and many and like YouTube to like giving her music away for free and building like a huge following with her fans and Kelly will telling and you can ask loads of questions about that. Uh, I think it's really cool and does hip hop as well. And then we have a Tiger JK, part of Drunken Tiger and Tasha, Yoon Mirae, her many monikers and Busy who all um, are artists in their own rights from Korea and hip hop as well, and, uh, and who are here. And all of you are playing in Medium. So Kelly played last night at the Jamendo night. And, drunk, and Tiger JK and Tiyuna play, and Busy are playing tonight. That's it. Yes. Please nine complete. Yeah, at 9 o'clock. OK. Um, so please feel free. We'll do like a quick introduction as we have. And, but please feel free to like ask questions, because it's a really artist speak to artist session and I'm, we're not here to like monopolize too much. Um, I was going to go like with a few questions uh, because you all do like, you all are in hip hop and that's one of the main things that you have as artists. Um, is, would, I mean in terms of, a, but you all do a hip hop with a, with a twist. Um, Kelly, you do hip hop about, correct me if I'm wrong, inner peace and yoga and self empowerment and feminine values and and, and like really being in, in tune with the universe. And, and, and that's something that people are not used to having hip hop mm. talk about. Um, and you guys like do Korean, I mean, I don't understand everything in Korean, <laughs> but, but you do like, you have like an American upbringing for most and you, you rap and you sing in English and in Korean. And this is like two forms of hip hop that are very unusual. Did you, did you like, please feel free to, to tell everyone here more about how like why hip hop and why that genre and why you know and how you came to the f like doing something new with that genre that's very like used to certain codes. Question. Um, I don't. I, I've never really set out to particularly like mix hip hop with a certain genre. Um, and I wouldn't say that I particularly chose hip hop to do. I, I was just, my dad was a DJ in his spare time and he happened to love hip hop. So whenever the music videos came on or whenever he played it, I just kind of naturally was drawn to it. And I started doing hip hop and then, yeah, since he was a DJ, he didn't only just play hip hop, he played, you know, Motown and he played pop and dance. And so I guess just everything that I grew up listening to kind of just went into the music. I didn't really set out to like, oh, this would be a good mix or whatever feels good. So, and if the people happen to like it, then it works out better. But I, I've never really particularly set out to mix anything. It just kind of happens. And um, when did you start like saying hip in, in Korean? Um, well, uh, like I told you earlier, before I was uh, an army brat. So my dad, I was born in the States raised there for a while, then my dad got stationed to Korea, and my friend actually went out for an audition, and I tagged along and kind of got picked up on accident. And up until then, my Korean was really, I mean, it's still bad, but um, it I was- I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I kind of could have got away with it. But, um, yeah, it was really bad then. It's still, I'm still learning, but until then, I wasn't really, um, yeah, I didn't really know that much about Korean music. And yeah, everything just kind of happened by beautifully, accidentally. Um, that's when I got into the Korean culture more and started to learn Korean. And then I met JK and he started to learn Korean and write Korean and he's taught me a lot. But until then, I didn't really know much about it. And I'm still learning. So what was the question again? <laughs> Hip hop, Korean. Um, well, so I, why did I, why did I choose hip hop? I guess is that. Did you choose? Yeah. Hip -hop? Did well, choose you? I mean, in a, in some ways, I feel like it kind of chose me. Um, I fell in love with Salt and Pepper and Queen Latifah, um, and in you know I'm from a small town, so my access to hip hop was somewhat limited. 
and I uh, started listening to Wu-Tang Clan, and I was like, wow, there's a whole world out there that I don't know about. And then I was learning a lot about how the world works um, and becoming really pissed off <laughs> about it and um, simultaneously listening to Dead Prez and Talib Kweli um, and artists like that. And I was just, my mind was continuing to be blown open. And throughout that entire period, I was learning every hip hop song. You know, like my friends would come to me and ask me what things meant you know, and <laughs> so I, I was just always rapping other people's music um, and, and also writing in my head. Um, but I didn't have the opportunity, you know, to be in ciphers growing up or anything like that. So when I moved to Pittsburgh um, in my late teens, I started to kind of get into the hip hop community. Um, I worked at the radio station at the University of Pittsburgh and um, played hip hop. Uh, on my radio show and started, you know, in the corner, I would, you know, like my friends that were MCs and DJs and stuff would hear that I could rap and they'd be like, I know, I know you got bars, come on. And so I think another MC kind of pushed me, you know, was like, please do a verse on my album, you know, I'm releasing it soon and I agreed and that was kind of the beginning of a very, very long journey. <laughs> but I, I mean, hip hop's like everything to me and I, I think the activism, that where it was born, it's not necessarily all there now, but um, that's why I love it so much. And, and in terms of like, as a music genre, you kind of all feel that it shows you. Um, is it also because it, it, I don't know, you seem to have recreated like a family or communities around each other and not, in, not just in the sense of like, oh, we're hanging out together and we have a family and uh, we get on. It's more like in terms of helping each other out in the values that you profess as, as a community and as a scene, it's like really coming through. Is that something also that, that, that in terms of in the way you, 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 you handle your own careers, is that something that's really helped you or is it something that was just natural? And how and how and how do you like go about that? How do you the fact of having the scene is it is it more about like less focusing on solo career or like more like contributing to the community? Uh, I first started hip hop. I mean, it's last question. Growing up in LA, um, <laughs> back in the day, you know, you, you kid, you don't want to do, you want to rebel for no reason. You know, I was going against the grain, and back in LA, was really gang heavy. And um, also being Asian, Asian wasn't even minority. It was white, black, and when I used to um, hang out with my black friends, I would always get pulled over. When I used to hang out with, you know, no disrespect with my <laughs> white friends, never. And my white friends never used to understand that. And cops that pull me over used to, will clown me and say, why are you hanging out with these black folks? You know what I mean? Like, they pull, they pull me over because I'm with bunch of black guys or something like that. And I heard, um, excuse my French, <laughs> when I heard fuck the police by NWA, it was like, you know what I mean, Li liberating. Not that I'm into gangsta, I'm, I'm into violent. It was, you know, I'm a rebellious kid, you know, back in the, you don't want to do nothing that your father tell you to do. And I was like, oh, this, this is the shit right here. You know, I want to do this. You know what I mean? I could say fuck the police, like <laughs> fucking this music. Excuse me, I sir. Think it was, I thought it was like, you know, music's supposed to be poetic, beautiful, and all that, you know? These guys are saying, fuck the police, and I'm feeling it. So I was horrible. I didn't know I was gonna be a rapper. Just my friends, growing up in LA, there's a circle, everybody's battling, circling, and you, have, you run into all these rappers that you idolize. It was easy to spot them, and like she said, Wu-Tang Clan came out, and Wu-Tang Clan made Asians cool, all that, not in a stereotypical way that, Kung Fu and you know the the crazy. I was like, man, I'm I'm feeling this, and as I was hanging out with them, they just put me on like, hey, J.K. Man, just get in the cipher, and that was horrible. And I never thought that I would be making money off this, and I just got stuck with it. And as far as giving back to community, now I'm growing. You know, I'm a uh, I'm a father, I'm a husband, and and you know sometimes I wanna express. Some ignorant shit, you know what I mean? I don't, I can't go out there and, 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 you know what I'm saying? Cheat on my wife and do crazy shit and, you know what I'm saying? Fuck with all the groupies and shit like that, right? But with, through music though, I'm, I'm letting it out. I'm letting it out. And she's doing the same thing, you know? But, so, 
now, back to your question, I'm mature now. So we, we do a lot of charity work and um, we teach, because kids, they all tell me it's boring. You know, I mean, school's boring and shit like that. Uh, excuse my language. So they t ask me, I'm invited to, uh, uh, believe it or not, you know, I mean, I'm not a good speaker, but I'm invited to a lot of uh, college to not rap, but lecture and, and teach hip hop and, and, you know, teach history, you know, using rap and stuff, you know. We, do, we do stuff like that and, you know, I mean, with them, letting people know Asians are more than, you know, I mean, dancing around and, and doing all this. Just right last now. night, just last night, you know, yeah. two groups of hoodlums in Cannes, I never thought they would happen, came up to us like, are you Chinese? I'm like, no. Are you Japanese? No. Then you must be motherfucking Korean and they're f harassing me. So, did you keep cool? I didn't keep cool. No. I didn't want to get arrested, but I went over there and, and I showed him what's up. And my wife, he got mad at me. She ran to the hotel. You know, okay. but you know, I mean, it happens. Uh, people look at us like, let's see what they got to do. We're not even minority. Like, you know, they, they question us. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's your background that, that validates, you know what I'm saying, the type of music you're doing? It's frustrating, but I experienced that in Cannes. After Cannes was like the movie, beautiful ladies and cities and buildings, and it was horrible, you know? But yeah, you know. I didn't want to bring up all these bad memories either, yeah. you know? <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. But like, so hip hop, like in the fact that you, you've been like, not just hip hop, but like progressing as an artist, has it like helped you to like, well, you were talking about how you go and see young kids and like reaching out to people, that seems to be something that you all have in common. How has that helped you? And how, like, as, as artists and as like business artists, has that helped you as well to like free yourself of having to have too many like old school partners? Has, I don't know, has, how do you feel about the way you've been able to like move forward thanks to like the way you've been used to collaborating in hip hop? And how, do you want to tell us more about how you function, basically, as, as business, but as artists? I think you should answer. Yeah, that was a long answer, so. <laughs> it's okay. Um, well, uh, I guess to the first point, um, I think, I mean, I was going to, one of the things that I always say when I talk to people, like new artists or groups of people, I'm always talking about the fact that building a community around you is really important and for me I never set out when I sort of was pushed into you know doing music I never wanted to do it alone I you know I really like the idea of working with a band I was in a band um, and I actually played with them for a year they had been together for 13 years I played with them for a year and then they broke up <laughs> so I was like was it me um, <laughs> but you know and I, I tried many times after that to, to create a band and it was it was challenging but you know that's the great thing about hip-hop and you know I have a company as well called nocturnal and part of why the community was built is because in Pittsburgh it's a small town I mean it's a city but it's small and everybody knows each other and um, you work together and so I think that part of why, you know, I've been able to progress to where I have is totally due to my community. I couldn't have done anything by myself. Um, I wouldn't have done anything by myself. Um, the encouragement, I always tell people to, you know, anybody that believes in you and your music, and even if they don't like your music, but they believe in you, to, you know, keep them close to you and believe in them, you know, find out what, what they're into. And that's what my whole company was built off of, that's what my music is built off of. Um, you know, I probably wouldn't continue to make music if I wasn't getting a response from fans that it was helpful to them, you know? Um, and then you were sort of asking the model, I guess? If, if you're okay with talking about that. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's a work in progress. It's always um, changing. And um, I mean, we've been doing uh, Creative Commons for all of my music. So all my music is completely free. Um, we started out on Jamendo, um, and it was really just a test. You know, we just wanted to see what happened, and we got, um, we were the most, I was the most downloaded artist when we, like within a couple weeks of releasing the album. So we were really excited that 150,000 people got my album. And even though I didn't make a dime, it was like, for me as an artist, I really believe in what I'm talking about. I want people to hear it because I learned from hip hop so much that I want to 
you know, do the same. So uh, they suggested Jamendo, and um, I think I have over 400,000, you know, plays on Jamendo, which is amazing. They brought me here, you know, um, so the model's working. I'm in Cannes. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I think it's really, um, it, was a, it was sort of a tough choice to give it away for free because I do think that there is incredible value to music. Um, but I, I'm confident now in the choice and I feel really good about it. It's a risk. Um, but Jamendo is taking a risk, for example. You know, they're not able to make money in, in very many ways except for licensing, and I think that it's pretty awesome. They have an entire team of people dedicated to music and to spreading music. Um, so, you know, I think it right now, the way that I'm going to be able to progress is continuing to build my community. And that's, I have my Owl Tribe girls, where you at? <laughs> um, we have a, you know, a, a plan for sort of an international booking strategy, and we love doing shows. We love going out and meeting people. So that's you know where our focus is going to be in terms of revenue, as well as lovely T-shirts like I'm wearing. That's made by you know my friends are artists. My friends are photographers. I published a book with my friends um, that's in bookstores na nationwide. So you know we're just sort of looking at it like. It's a lifestyle, you know, everybody in my crew is not just an artist where, you know, I also do crystal work, I do Reiki, I'm an activist. Um, Angela over there is a solo artist herself. She also makes her own music and she's a yoga teacher. Holly, my manager, she's also a meditation instructor. My DJ is a dancer and a Reiki master. So, you know, we're just sort of like one big package and that's, it's more about um, being everything that we are and, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to work, hopefully. But I'm having fun, and that's, you know. That's what counts. And I feel, like it's, yeah. I feel like it's, you know, it's making an impact, and that's what, you know, what everybody wants to do as a human being. I, yeah, thank you. I, was there anything you want to add? Because you seem to be approving and, and following along the lines of that. No. <laughs> what <she> okay. <laughs> um, I think we're going to open up to the audience a bit now. Um, does anyone have any questions? Because this was a quick overview, but anyone want to ask any questions, please feel free. Don't be scared. Is it working? Thank you. That's amazing what you're doing. I thought absolutely awesome. Because you're combining all the different things, which is kind of, in a way, is how I see my life going as well. It's just not one, you know, you're not just one thing. You're not just a musician. You're not just identifying yourself in that way. The only problem is how, how are you making a living? I mean, I appreciate you're not looking for the superstar millionaire status, but what do you do to make this make money for you? Well, um, so I mentioned uh, it's a work in progress. You know, there's a lot of breaking even happening in my life, um, and I'm okay with that. I've had a I've been an entrepreneur for seven years. I don't know how long. Um, had my own business, and I've pretty much always broken even, and I'm pretty okay with that in general. Um, I am just happy doing what I love to do. But in terms of you know the plan, it is really about booking. Um, it's about creating great relationships like I have with Jamendo where I was brought here, had this awesome opportunity. Um, the cool thing about you know what I'm doing with the free music is that everybody can use my music for free and that's not just a listener, that's someone can use it in a film, in a video. There's hundreds of videos out there of like, girls applying their makeup with my music in the background or the ski trip that, you know, someone took or like some extreme sports. So, um, you know, I'm just hopeful that the, the path that I'm on is going to continue to build my fan base that continuing to do shows is not going to be a problem. Um, because we're offering not just a show, but also like when we, as the Owl Tribe, um, are contacting colleges right now, for example, related to Women's History Month. We have a big show at Chatham University, which is in our hometown, um, which is gonna kick off that month, and we're providing workshops um, throughout the weekend where we teach people, like I have Aztec dancers from Mexico that open up my show. They're gonna teach Aztec dance. I have 
you know, Holly's going to teach meditation instruction. Bobby's going to do an inner goddess uh, workshop. So when we contact colleges, we don't just say we're there, you know, we're going to perform. We're also talking to the women's studies department and indigenous studies departments. And, you know, so it's just a sort of 360 thing. Um, and of course, uh, merchandise is something um, I don't really love the idea of, of merchandise. I don't like the carbon footprint of like sending a t-shirt and all that good stuff, but it's something that I, I kind of see it as an, a great opportunity to promote the artists that I work with. Cause I, when I'm on stage and, and the artists are available, they'll paint live and it's the same people that make the shirts. So it's a way to continue to support my community. So merchandising, booking, and I think that, you know, something's gonna happen with the fact that I'm giving away my music. It's gonna return, you know, you don't ever give without getting back. Any other questions? I've got a question. This might be a really, it might be a really boring one, but it's for Drunken Tiger. I was just wondering what your, uh, what your opinions are with, with regards to hip hop music. Can and you, sorry, can you speak like this? Hip hop music and pop sort of at the moment, what your, what your views, what your opinions? mean in Korea or like worldwide or just worldwide yeah. uh, I like it you know it's just changing because back in the day I, I look mad young right I look young but I'm, I'm pretty old you know so people really I, I, back in the day we used to say whatever is pop like it's pop music or whatever is you know popular we hated it it's like it's, it's whack that's not real we used to hate it we, you know what I mean? But I think, and we thought it was not cool, and and all the crowd used to preach to us, like, oh, you guys are into whack stuff, and you guys know what you're talking about. I think that's what's happening. Sometimes I do feel like hip-hop's sort of transformed into something else, and, and um, you know, it's, I feel like the, you know, radio station and the big companies, you know, running stuff, you know what I mean? So all you hear is the same artists over and over, and it's all about, you know, same same topics but i feel like now youth these days maybe feeling what we're feeling back in the days their voice you know maybe you need some wretched stuff but personally i do like old school you know music you know i mean soulful music like she said talib Kweli, black star was crazy um nas going back to rock him eric being rock him stuff like that but you know but we do um Sometimes when I do this crazy stuff, so we came out with this uh, record and we're doing this sort of wretched, ignorant stuff that we'll never do. We're kind of, you know, in this character faking it. So. So, do you see a resurgence of it? Do you see a resurgence of, uh, of music with lyrical content that was sort of like hip hop in, you know, in the early, mid 90s? Do you see a resurgence of hip hop? Do you hear the question? Do you see a resurgence of hip hop? Resurgence of hip hop. Is it coming back? In the near in the near future, I'm just. Did you see it, or are you involved in, with circles in Korea or or on the internet where it's it's becoming more predominant? I think it's, it's circling. You know, I don't I don't mean to sound cliche, but I think it, uh, it all come back around. And now I think I kind of feel the movement of the old school hip hop coming back. You know, what I mean, like these people are like now doing back in the day soulful sampling and, and, and you know just more into lyricism and stuff like that and artists like her you know what I mean there are many artists like her not that you're one of many but you want a million you know I hope so. um, <laughs> hopefully after this interview maybe we could you know connect and come up with a great music but I think it's coming back the movement is coming back I think people are getting sick of that whole you know not to diss other genre of music, I love it too. My son loves it, I dance to it, you know, electronic hip hop and all that, but now I think it's coming back. So, I mean, the diversity, you know what I mean? I think they, are, they should all coexist. You know, I'm giving you the politically correct uh, answer right now, and you know, <laughs> you should be talking. Hi, 
I, I've been all, like, almost chasing you all day long. Uh, I've been fan for Drunken Tiger, and, and like I remember when I was in middle school, I was like memorizing your Nandar Wane rap and like singing your T song at karaoke and whatever. And the thing is, like, I've noticed that you have so much talent, and then you can you speak perfect English. And then I was always like curious why I can't like see you internationally. Like you have enough talent and like everything so do you have any plan to like really export your music and uh, anything uh, to the world pretty soon i'll give a quick answer and let it reply that um tasha is really yes <laughs> you guys leave your car pick up your car please Anyway, um, Tasha really is the one. She's uh, plain humble, you know, she's really shy and all that, but on stage she's crazy. Not to reference nobody, she hates when a uh, uh, compares, you know, artists hate it, like you like somebody. <laughs> but she's sort of, she has that respect and she's known as Lauren Hill of Korea. The reason being, she's, <laughs> she sings, she raps, and, and really she's dope. She's really We're the one. We're married in case you guys didn't get that. No, 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 for real, you got, you got to. Please come to the show and check it out for yourself. You know what I mean? She's dope. And what happened was she could, she could have crossed over a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? We met with, um, not to drop no names, but, you know, Quincy Jones. We became good friends. Uh, way before that, boys, uh, boys, boys, to the, boys to the Men, Michael Jackson, all them companies wanted to pick her up. She was uh, racially correct to them. You know what I mean? Um, half black, half Asian. Um, female MC who's better than all the male M uh, rappers out there. So she became this sort of iconic figure right now. She's a um, queen of uh, hip-hop and soul in Asia. She could have really blown up. What happened was she married me. <laughs> For real. And this is what happened. I, and we tried a couple of times and, and dudes won't leave her alone. New York, uh, LA, like I hated it. So, you know, she doesn't know this, but behind the stage, you know, I had to talk to him. Plus, we in this messed up company. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of my family, but we in this little company, and we, no, none of us know what we're doing. You know what I mean? So, I don't even know how we got here. I was like, I didn't believe him till I got here. I'm like, damn, are you kidding me? But she's the one, and me, personally, um, be loving hip-hop so much back in the day, I was, I was into it. It was like, Back in the day, we used to call ourselves backpacker. I was like, it was hip hop was my Bible, but being in love with hip hop culture so much, I felt like it's not really right for me to come out in, you know, in the states and stuff like that. Cause they're not ready. They weren't ready. I don't live in the hood. Not that hip hop is all about talking about what's going on in the hood or projects, but back in the day, I used to mimic that. Cause my friends, I used to mimic those topics. But I live in Korea. I, you know, I don't go through what they go through it. So, but I rap about them for fun. So it, it wasn't right. I just, I just got happy, not satisfied. I was content with my life. I met the one, you know what I mean? And I'm doing music that I, you know, love to do. And I have a following that, you know, I sell out concerts. So I settled and, and this happened. K-pop blew up and, you know, they brought us here. So I was like, okay, never been to France. She got mad at me when we got married. You know, we didn't go no honeymoon, and I mean, you know, friends. So, three. In <laughs> so yeah, that's what happened. I, I warned you before. Uh, okay, just. No, I'm, I'm just being honest. You know what I mean? Like she, after, you know, she said this amazing. He's about, you know, what I'm saying this spirit and uplifting community, and I can't, I can't go after that, man. I didn't know. Uh, nah, I feel stupid. But, <laughs> fuck, the, fuck the police, and I was a re rebel. Oh man, I feel stupid. I was like, man. And before, you know what I'm saying? I, I was talking about how I'm giving back community. I was bullshitting you. And he, he knew I was bullshitting. He was sleeping. I, I was making up stuff. And after you, we, we like, we do this for money. You know what I mean? We make. Yeah, to answer your question, I, you know, I'm really being protective because dude's not living alone because she got, you know. Skills and <laughs> fat booty. So MFBTY. 
my fans better than yours. We just came out with this crazy uh, <laughs> K-pop, K-pop esque uh, group. Yeah, stands for. She thinks it means my fans better than yours, but what it really means is Miss Fat Booty. You know. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're giving us the lowdown on everything now. Thank you. Um, if I, if we were to sum up, so basically from what before we like go to more questions. So from what what seems to be like coming out of all of you is that, um, is that it's it's not so much about having a career the old way, about like saying I'm gonna go conquer the world. It's more like as long as I'm doing the music that I that I want, that's me, and that I'm having a happy life and being and collaborating with the people that I want to colla collaborate with, then that's that's the rhythm that you want to basically keep. Is is that what I'm understanding correctly? Is, you know, so like it, it, it's 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 new because the world is like more accessible now. Yes, definitely. But it's you are the guys changing the pace, and you're not like rushing into like going and conquering all continents because you want to have some kind of organic progress progression and seeing that you properly connect with the people around you, not just fans, not just like the artists and the fan, but like collaborations. That I think it's great that you were saying, well, you should maybe meet up and start doing something. I think that would be great um, because it's, it's part of artistry and just connecting if you have the same values. Please complete if I'm missing the point. No? I think you're right on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I think that's right. I mean, I, I think I'm driven uh, to make money so that I can, you know, make sure that my team is, you know, paid what they're worth, um, make sure that I can do the things that I need to do to support the music. Um, but most of all, I'm really, I mean, if you listen to the music, like, I, I really want to see a global transformation. I think that the world is in need of it. <laughs> so, I mean, that's like, I kind of look at it like the day that, you know, things do shift, which I think it's, I think it's actually possible. I think things are so bad that, um, you know, people are waking up. Uh, I would probably drop the mic. <laughs> Truthfully, I mean, I don't know. You know what I mean? Your fans it's, don't want the world to be fixed so that you don't retire. <laughs> is, is that the idea? No, I mean, you know, I'm sure I would still have that that gut thing. I mean, I recently, I'm adopted and I recently found my birth father and he, you know, none of, no one in my family is really musical, but my birth father was a, a actor and singer and performer since he was like a baby through age 18. So, um, and my aunt was, is Christy McNichol. I don't know if you know who that is, but so there's like this whole obviously something in my genes, you know, like that makes sense now. <laughs> So many years later that this is why I'm doing that. So maybe I wouldn't actually drop the mic, but I mean, I really, that's what drives me now. It's not really about, um, money is, is important. It definitely is, but it, I really want to see, because I think like so much of why it's important for me to make music is I learned so much from music. I gained so much strength from all of these different things that I talk about in my, in my music. I was such a depressed, uh, fucked up individual <laughs> in different parts of my life and I learned certain things that helped me become, you know, more useful <laughs> in this world, you know what I mean? And so I just want to be able to share that because people shared it with me, you know? So business matters and social media and SEO and like all the things that people over focus on about the industry now, like how you connect with your fans, all these things are actually a means to an end so that you guys are like good with yourselves and doing the music that you want to do and talk about the things that you want to talk about right right um i respect her a lot i mean i salute to all she's doing and, and i'm really really from the bottom of my heart that's crazy and, uh, and really same thing you know i'm nervous and so i'm saying weird stuff but you know my company was pushing for a, a artist from the state that's relevant right now, it's hot. It's trying to spend all these monies so we could blow up. But to me, I'm still a geek. I'm a I'm a fan of hip hop. So the moment I cut a record with Rock Him, the dilated people, Rock, you know what I mean, and uh, Ill Minds, who's working uh, on Kanye's album right now, he's working on an album. You know what I mean? It's, 
And I'm gigged out by stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like, man, these are my idols. Rakim said yes, you know what I mean? So companies like, who's Rakim? Why, why are you going with him? You know what I mean? But I was like, yo, that, I, I could have retired after that, you know what I mean? So like she said, money is important and we're doing that, you know, we, we gotta be responsible for our kids. But at the end of the day, I think it's music and the message that drive us. It's, yeah, it's corny, it's cliche, but it's true, you know what I mean? So. And it's you, so. And you gotta say something. Why do I, I agree with it. What, of, what both of you queen said. Queen of Asian hip hop. I'm plugging you in, you ain't saying that. Much talk, no. Anybody wanna have more questions? Yep, sorry. Uh, um, as, a, as a starting Korean American artist, how did you face the social pressures between, you know, Korean tradition, right? So like how, what are some ways that you, uh, what are some ways that you battled and like how did you fight through it? What do you mean in Korea? In Korea or in America, you know, like your peers, like do you, did you do stuff differently in the States or did you do just, you know? No, I mean, you know, it's, I don't want to, you know, bore everybody, but it's, back in the day it was really tough, especially LA, you gotta, you gotta be in the, it was gang heavy. So I wasn't violent. I was a, a dork. Okay. I love hip hop. You know, I love music. But you have to join. You have to belong somewhere for protection. And all my Asian friends were like, "Yo, be down with your people, man." But I went with the black gang, and and it wasn't really a gang. Like they they weren't banging or being violent. It was just like a way of life. They're, they were hanging. Their uncle was in the in, in the gang. Their nephews in the gang. I was in the environment. And you know, like I said, Asian wasn't considered even as minority. We we're good at math, good at uh, Taekwondo, you know, martial arts. And really messed up thing was, I'm, I'm a Florida state champion. I, I am good at, you know, martial arts. And I was hiding that. I was like, they're stereotyping me, but it's real. You know what I mean? <laughs> my pops, uh, my uncle owned a uh, laundry, you know, uh, in a liquor store, so like you motherfuckers stereotyping me and shit, but it was all real. <laughs> so what I did was I was hiding. I, I think I kind of went against the grain, and and I did that. And when I went back to Korea, I was crazy. Now to them, I was a sellout. Like you rap in English and you do this, and and you know I got I got shanked. It was rough. It was crazy. My life was rough. So what I did was, you know, I went to library for two years. I was studying. Korean dictionary, and I was I was, I was just, just mastering my craft, trying to make Korean language into something that could be, you know, they, they could make sense as a rap, you know, form. And, and I mastered that, and now, not now, but I started gaining respect, you know, but you know, no social pressure and stuff like that. I don't, I don't wanna be like, you know, I grew up fine. <laughs> it's interesting, because you're, you 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 basically all have this thing of going against stereotypes. I mean, you as like a female rapper as well. I mean, you, there there is a string of female rappers that are very credible, but like a blonde female rapper, uh, you know, from Pittsburgh it, is that was that also incremental in actually, you know, coming out and and or not at all maybe. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's it's definitely played a role. I think it was maybe easier for me because I was. In the hip hop community, I was planning shows. I was supporting other artists. I was I brought in the Wu Tang Clan. I was like so excited, you know, um, and was able to like choose openers. So it's sort of like I had a I guess social cred, <laughs> you know what I mean? In terms of like people supported me because I supported them. Um, online, you know, I certainly hear uh, all sorts of things, and um, and when I do shows, sometimes, you know, I get sort of crooked looks until I get up on stage. And I wasn't always very good, you know? I'm, I'm, it's, I'm always working on, on improving my craft. This was a very much a side thing, you know? I never had a lot of confidence. And um, I think part of that was because I didn't have anybody like me that was doing it, even though I really wanted to. Um, I had, you know, my friends around me. So I think that that made it a little bit more challenging. It's, it took longer, it made it take longer, I guess, is probably the uh, result. Because you, you all seem to have been like working and a lot of humility and saying, okay, I'm gonna go back to the drawing board and like take things patiently and build it up because that's really what I want to do. And adversity has kind of made it maybe a bit longer, but but 
more consistent, maybe. Yeah, that's so amazing. That I mean, I really respect what you know, going and and studying. I mean, that's that's really the one of the most important parts about uh, being an MC is you know, is having something to say and being able to say it in the way that you want to say it. That's wow. that's amazing. For some reason, I can't really speak. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm actually you know, I I I I often listen to my music and I'm like, wow, there's so much more that I need to learn, you know? I mean, that's what I learned from myself. <laughs> She's being humble. Tasha had it really tough, though, you know? She's been, um, now is, is K-pop world, you know, they're all young now. Like, they're 13, 14, you know, doing their thing. But she was the first artist who, who debuted when she was 14. And back in the day, uh, they had to hide her uh, age. She was 19 forever. She was nine forever, and, and they had to, uh, they, her old company back in the day was trying to hide the fact that she's half black. So she used to cry about it, and, and you know, after she got out of that mess, you know, you know, industry shady, but she became free. She let her, you know what I'm saying? She stopped straightening her hair. She's, uh, she's talking about it, you know what I mean? It was really tough. They used to put white makeup on her face to make her look, you know, I guess, more fitting, cliche, yeah. but she, you know, for some reason she's not talking right now. <laughs> you seem to do it really well for her. So. <laughs> I'm gonna get it when I get back. <laughs> That's marriage. <laughs> Anybody have any other questions? We have, yeah, a bit more time. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah. Um, two quick questions. Sorry, Kelly. Um, I listened to your track, the one that you posted on uh, Midan, and I like. Because I MC as well, and I was sort of like um, wondering, like your flow is kind of weird, <laughs> not not in a bad way at all, but it's like you're not sure whether you want to rap fast or rap slow, and I'm it's like wow. I just wanted to know what was your process when you were like writing that song, you know? Yeah, um, I forget what song is it. Trap. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah um, the process for that song. I mean, every song is is very different in terms of the way that it, it happens, um, you know, I just tend to like listen to a beat over and over and over and over again. And I'll have, I have just like a playlist on my iTunes of just every imaginable, you know, beat that my friends make. And I, you know, eventually hear something. And um, for that one, I mean, I, I think that I've, due to, you know, fee I, I take feedback very, very literally. I don't, I love criticism. I'm all about it because it helps me understand, you know, what I need to improve on. And I think during that, the process of that album, a lot of people um, online were, you know, questioning my, my ability to flow, which is, happens to every MC. And, uh, and I knew that um, I wasn't necessarily giving it everything. And so on that album, I did kind of, go harder, <laughs> I guess. And I mean, it is weird, and I'm okay with that. But I think it, you know, every every song is very different. That one, I, I really um, actually had a friend come over, um, Bonix is his name, he's Wiz Khalifa's DJ, actually. And um, he listened to that song, and he actually had the idea to break up the hook, where you hear the fast part, and the ah, yeah, yeah, you know? Um, that was actually his idea to sort of split it. And um, yeah, so like in that in that case, someone else kind of gave me a little a little help. Um, but in terms of writing, most of the time, it just kind of comes. I mean, I feel like it's a channeling sort of process. I don't even. I just wrote two songs on the plane to get here, and you know, that's how it usually rolls. <laughs> and um, to the Korean side, sorry, um, I'm gonna admit my faux pas is that when I read um, from you, that you're from South Korea, I was like, I, I didn't listen to your track, only because I thought it would be in Korean, and I can only, you know, I can't, I can listen to any language, but I can only, you know, understand the full potential if I understand right. the language. Um, but what I would like to ask is, what is the, what is the hip hop scene in Korea like compared to the rest of the world? Is it more, you know, skill driven is it like you know you, your Nas and your Rakims or is it more you know pop driven and production di driven like you know western hip hop is today you know uh whatever happened in the states is happening in Korea and it's very underground it's uh what they call a uh, purist 
it's a hip hop that what they like. It's, it's more authentic. And it's funny to say, you know, what I mean? but the underground scene is heavy, and they're kind of rebels. They don't want to sign with uh, the big companies, and these MCs are skill driven. They're crazy. They take their art seriously. Crap. We have a, a freestyle championship. Ba the battle. And back in the day, uh, it was strange. You're right. It was strange. It sounded uh, Korean to me. You know what I mean? I'm saying it from, uh, uh, you know, yeah. But now they they all skill driven. Is, is we have a b-boy championship. Actually, you know, Korean b-boys are like number one in, in the world. And DJ championship. Hip hop's heavy. Just when K-pop blew up, though, they're not getting no attention, and they don't mind it, though. Yeah. So. Clubs are crazy, you know. Just come through. Any other questions? Sorry. Uh, yeah, check, check. Yo. Oh. Hi, what's up? My name is DJ Spooky from New York City. I'm a huge fan of uh, Korean uh, hip hop and electronic music. I got a quick question for the Korean side of things, which is, do you see more of a dynamic between what's going on in Seoul? Like, there's DJ Seoul, uh, who collects old Korean vinyl, stuff like that. He's a great you know, DJ. Um, what are you guys going to be doing in, in more of an American context? Because I think that's a very open space for you right now. I'm just curious to see what plans you guys have. Because um, Psy, obviously, Gangnam, you know, Gangnam. Right. But that's like, you know, I want to hear what you guys are doing in the U.S. Um, well, thankfully, through technology, the world has gotten a lot smaller. So we don't really have to necessarily put ourselves out in the U.S. right now and, like, tour from city to city. Um, w with, you know, shows like Madame or um, we just did a show, Music Matters. Um, we're hoping that, like you said, I mean, we have nothing against I. We're actually very good uh, friends of him. But there are other genres in Korea, especially, like you said, uh, hip hop is really big. So we're hoping that through our performances, um, even though there is a language barrier, that people will appreciate the flow or the beats and hopefully gain more interest and through that, if our fan base, with God willing, gets bigger and bigger, we'll be able to start touring in the States and make it bigger. Um, yeah, we're not really putting ourselves out there per se right now. Like we don't have like big representation right now in the States or anything like that, but like through the internet and shows like this, hopefully. Yeah, and um, we might be uh, you know, it's being cowardice, you know what I mean? But we're not trying to, really blow up in the States or anything like that. Just we go with the flow, like we didn't uh, expect this, this global sensation of, you know, K-pop and we didn't expect this. We're happy with what we're doing and we don't want to change our style. But like I said, Ill Mind is working on our record, you know, it's original, it's not, I know Ill Mind is uh, uh, from New York and he's working with a lot of, you know, artists in the States, but his sound is original, so hopefully if they dig our sound, you know, we're going to go with it. But as you know, like you said, we're rapping in Korean. So, you know what I mean? There's got to be little hindrance. But back in the day, when I, back in the day in L.A., I used to be into this rapper from France uh, named MC Solar. I didn't know what the hell was talking about, but I loved it. I loved this flow. But hopefully that happens, you know? But we're we, we just doing us. And thank you for the question. We'll go for two more questions and then we'll stop. Okay, um, I got a question. What's your first meeting with hip hop? I mean, as for me, 20 years ago, I remember I found a Warren G Regulate music video and that totally put me upside down and changed my life. So what's the, yours? I can't remember. Uh, it was either Slick Rick or Kid and Play because my dad was very, very animate about learning the, I don't forget what the dance was called, but when he held his foot and he jumped over. Um, yeah, I broke a few coffee tables during that. But it was either Kid and Play, I don't know if that's why I remember Kid and Play, but it was, yeah, either Kid and Play or Slick Rick for me. Biz? Busy. Busy. Man of mystery. Um. For me, it was like, you know, as you said, you know, I love RNG, Regulate, this DJ, and Snoop Dogg, Nas, everybody, every MC influenced me from the get go. Uh, okay. 
um, let's talk about sex, baby. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I was from a small town, so I, you know, wasn't playing on the radio. I was a gymnast, so I was at gymnastics camp with kids from all over the world, and that's how I heard the first time, and I was like, that's what we're dancing to. Everybody at the talent show. We're dancing to this song. I didn't really understand it, you know, whatever age I was, that that was potentially inappropriate, but... It was all right. <laughs> and I did a choreographed dance to, uh, actually, What a Man was, was another one as well that I did a choreographed dance to also. But my, mem my most like, vivid memories were um, sitting in the woods, uh, highly influenced, trying to explain to my friends what Wu-Tang was talking about. That was, that's very vivid. <laughs> yeah, uh, so many moments, you know. Um Slick Rick, obviously, and when I heard Lottie Dottie, just beatbox, and there's no hook. Long, long rap, no hook, and, and I was took by it, like, wow, you know what I mean? And, and you know, um, not that cussing and being, you know, being violent and being wretched is uh, good or anything like that, but back in the day when you're a kid, when you hear stuff like, fuck the police, it, it really fucks your head up, like, yeah, but I'm not gonna... I wasn't always into like crazy hip hop. I, uh, first, I moved to Florida, Miami, from and, and Two Live Crew was big then, and they're talking about even wilder shit, you know what I mean? That I can talk about here and yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. But as I got into the culture more, like you know, Commons, I used to love her, you know, um, Farside uh, was rapping about masturbation, you know what I mean? Stuff, yeah, the stuff they. You shouldn't talk about. It. They're rapping about it, and it was it was just fun for me. It was crazy. Not that you know I enjoy. Uh, <laughs> I do it sometimes. Sometimes when you're married, you know. Yeah, there's must. <laughs> That's what they say, not me. You should have known better than to ask that question by now. That's all I got. No, for say. It, when you're married, you know, you gotta do that. Um, no, like one of the not last. That I do it. Last two quick questions, if there are any. Uh, sorry, yeah, one, two. Hi, what's up? Uh, my name's Vandal uh, from The Movement. Uh, I've been living out in Malaysia for about five plus years, uh, working with the hip hop scene over there. And we're talking about uh, language in hip hop and how usually the English language hip hop tends to get uh, play in the US and around the world. And I know you guys have struggled with uh, Korean language. Uh, what kind of advice would you give to, to MCs who are not rapping in English? I think for me personally, um it comes down to the flow and the beat. Um, like he was saying when he listened to MC Solar, like uh, music is, you know, I think it should be colorblind. I mean, uh, true there is ignorance that exists in the world, but if the beat is dope and your flow is dope, I mean, really, whatever you're talking about, I, it doesn't really matter. I'm sh it matters, you know, sometimes, but you feel what you feel. Like there are a lot of international songs that I have no idea what they're talking about. But I mean, if the flow is there, you can't help but you know want to bump it or dance to it or listen to it. So I think the flow is is really right. important and the beat. Flow is and and in Korea, those scholars, a lot of scholars were kind of going against us and they criticized me for kind of messing up the grammar and things like that. Because to be honest, English words is I think best suited for rapping when it comes to rhyming and stuff like that. But, so I had to kind of create new, you know what I'm saying, cadences and, and come up with the way of flowing and rhyming. And I get asked that question a lot from my uh, Chinese uh, rapper friends because uh, Chinese language is really hard to make it sound like it's flowing, you know? But I think um, in a little poetic, you know, the, like little freedom, you know, they should, mess around with grammar and the way they align their words and stuff like that, I think, you know, we could make it happen. Before, Korean rap was sounding horrible, too. It was like, it was really choppy, but now it sounds good to me, at least. And you should check it out. <laughs> Please. <laughs> last question. Sorry, yeah, last question, and we have to... Check, this is work. okay. I'm not going to ask you now about hip-hop, but just about, you know, being an artist in general. Before you guys knew that you were on the path to a great career, how did you motivate yourself? How did you bring yourself to be, you know, strict and just say every day, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to bring it to an end. 
how did you get that that strength you know to to bring it through um well i guess uh, I, I think it was the people around me um in terms of you know being <laughs> this is great I know, it's uh, like they're <laughs> hearing music to get off the stage or something <laughs> we can start rapping to this um but yeah i mean i think it was it was people around me encouraging me um and uh like I said, I w I've always been involved in arts and entertainment and things like that. And <laughs> let's just dance. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, it was it was definitely people around me pushing me to to do this. Um, everybody in my life knew that I was a rapper, knew that I was writing. You know, also knew that I was entrepreneurial in spirit because I like don't really like to be told what to do very much. I don't really like how corporations work, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I, you know, was constantly being pushed to, to do it. So it was really support from other people. And also just developing and maturing myself. It was really hard to talk over that. I got five seconds. Yeah, I'm five looking. seconds. Five seconds. Go, go, go. Five seconds. Three, two, one, Thank zero. You. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> That's time. I appreciate your time. Thank you.